Robson, the heads of states and governments just decided in Malabo to recommit to the principles of CADEP. They have essentially restated their commitment to the 10% budget allocation towards agriculture as they had done in Maputo some time ago. Now, the MPCA was put in charge to come up with the implementation strategy, for example, and a whole lot of other different useful things. What do you think is the most important issue about this? Thanks, Pascal, for raising this issue because it's quite important. I think that what, what the Malabo Declaration does is it re-emphasizes something that had been done 10 years ago, but it, it puts in new impetus. It brings in new energy, it brings in new commitments into this whole process. It's not new, the 10% thing is not new, it was done in Maputo. But not many countries have been implementing it. Through the strategic framework and all these planning processes, it is going to be monitored. We are creating, not we, but I think the AU and the NEPAD framework and the CARIB, through the CARIB framework are creating a monitoring framework for these kinds of commitments. We are excited to, to, to note that the, the, the commitments themselves by the heads of state in Malabo have actionable things. There is an action plan that goes with it. And that is what is key. And that's what is going to be the driver. You've been talking already a little bit about all the uh, positive developments that have been happening in Africa. Unfortunately, they are a bit unequally distributed over the countries and within countries. Now, the heads of state have also acknowledged that agricultural development is viewed as a means to better share that budding prosperity in the AU member states. Where do you think does this idea come from that agricultural development is a comparatively better means to provide equitable welfare than other means? First of all, I think one of the things that uh, we have learned in Africa is that a lot of the development in Africa has been uh, driven by extractive uh, uh, minerals, be it oil or solid minerals themselves. And that is not very sustainable. Uh, they, are, they will finish. These are not uh, unlimited resources. And so when you look at the, the, the population, you still have in some countries 70-80% of the farmers constituting the, 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 the workforce, the, the drivers of the economy. So it is this focus on the people who drive the economy, who are the smallholders, that brings back the requirement, the, the, the focus uh, uh, to smallholder, to, to agriculture development as the uh, springboard for development in Africa. Yes, it also offers the opportunity for these countries who have minerals, who have oil, to invest in a more sustainable uh, uh, portfolio, which is agriculture. But it is tough. Therefore, that's why it is requires uh, a little bit of uh, more emphasis and refocus and resource mobilization towards uh, its development. So it's not easy to develop small old agriculture, neither is it easy to develop large-scale agriculture. The, the competitions are tough. Today we are discussing here on these barriers and everything, and it is going to take a significant amount beyond just the declarations, but commitments also through resources and personnel to ensure that these uh, declarations come to fruition. But yes, agriculture becomes the springboard for development uh, in most of these countries. We're talking about uh, smallholder agriculture. I think the Malabo Declaration doesn't really distinguish between sort of modernized, large scale and smallholder agriculture. What is your opinion? Is it going into towards smallholder agriculture in terms of implementation or is that maybe left out? Uh, deliberately? In my opinion, it is deliberate because what you don't want to do is that there is agriculture for smallholders and agriculture for large farmers. Agriculture should be the same. Technology should be adapted. Technology that works for large scale farmers should be adapted to work for smallholder farmers. And so the, the distinction is not uh, useful where it then favors the large scale farmers. And therefore, the, the focus is to develop agriculture. And agriculture, in a holistic manner, taking care of both the smallholders and the large scale, large scale. But the bottom line is that both sectors should produce viably and commercially. There is, the, there is no room for, for um, uh, sub, uh, mediocre results, even in the smallholder sector. We're here with the Global Donor Platform as well. 
And I would be interested to, uh, to hear maybe your opinion, what you think, how the development partners could support the strengthening of CADEP country level engagement in designing and managing new policies. You know, the Malabo Declaration was quite specific in terms of specific policy actions, if you consider that it is a, um, a heads of state a declaration. What do you think? How could they be supportive in a better way? I think that donor platform offers a unique opportunities for donors to fully uh, integrate themselves into the new thinking that is coming out of Africa. And this new thinking requires harmonization and support of country strategies. We, and I'm part of that group, we work with governments to develop these uh, strategies, to develop CADAPs, and we work with governments to develop the PIFs, the investment frameworks. And it is our role to ensure that whatever investments we bring in, whatever policy initiatives we bring in are supportive to those things. And so there is a commonality, there is a common denominator in terms of the debates and the actions for whatever we do uh, or, or whatever we bring in to add value to the country strategies and investments. So yes, it brings us much closer. It brings, and once the, I mean, simply bringing together these parties uh, ensures that there is uh, more resources available to pursue common goals. Thank you very much, Robson.